There are currently over 1 million people worldwide who hold at least one AWS certification. A million people! And here you are about to add yourself to the list. Why? Will it help your chances of getting a job? Probably not, given that people you're up against either have the same certification or even better, many years of real experience with that technology. Then what's the point? Why should anyone get certified then? Well, in this video, I wanna share what I think is the real reason why it's good to get a couple certifications under your belt, despite what others may tell you, as well as look at some strategic ways to go about choosing the right ones. But before we kick things off here, I do need to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of today's video, PostHog. When it comes to web apps and mobile apps, businesses need to track important metrics like conversions, churn rate, user journeys, refers, bounce rates, etc. Well, PostHog is an all-in-one suite of product and data tools to include product analytics, web analytics, session replay, A-B testing, surveys, and more. Instead of five separate solutions required to provide all of this information, you can get all user context in one central place with PostHog. Need to track an event like a sign-up, record a page view, give early access to a sub set of users, set feature flags to test changes without having to touch your code base, well, PostHog makes it easy. And the goal of these tools is to help founders and engineers understand how users are using their product, the success of their features, and the journeys of their visitors. And setup is as simple as pasting a snippet into your site header, and then PostHog will auto-capture data like page views, button clicks, and sessions. In addition, they have libraries for all popular backend and mobile languages and frameworks. And there's a very generous free tier for use of every one of their products. Products. And you can sign up for free right now with my custom link down in the description. Now back to the video. So tech, cloud, network certifications, etc. it's a highly debated topic. Very experienced IT professionals kind of scoff at them, saying it's just a piece of paper, it doesn't prove anything. And rightly so for them, they have years of hands-on experience. A certification would just be a piece of paper. But to a new developer trying to land the first job, it may actually be of some help to get a chance at an interview. But overall, I think none of us really need to put all of our weight on what employers think about our certifications. With millions out there certified, it really isn't going to single you out. Instead, we need to look at what I think is a more important result of getting a certification. Quick story. Five or so years ago, I was working as an SRE and I got put on a contract job with a team managing AWS infrastructure. We were largely an Azure shop and none of us really knew AWS well. Doesn't matter overall as we could figure it out, but it was still a challenge. Now I, in that situation, had two options. Number one, I could learn as I go, translating Azure concepts over to AWS and slowly making sense of everything. Or, two, I could force myself to learn the AWS services fast and deeply while simultaneously being hands-on daily by pursuing a certification. And this is where I think the value of certifications come into play. You see, the certification is largely for you. Where it would take you a lot of time to learn something as you sit spinning wheels and learning as tasks are demanded of you, you can instead force yourself to learn the material quickly by pursuing a certification. You can, for a short time, drink from the fire hose, as people used to put it. The certification forces you to learn something deeply at a much faster pace than if you were to learn along the way. We are, by nature, procrastinators. I hear from hundreds of people weekly who aim to pursue some goal and six months later are still aiming, having made no progress. Time passes them by, they're getting nowhere. A certification pursuit gives you a reason, a blueprint, a path toward learning some technology rather well in a reasonable amount of time. So to continue my story, I went and got an AWS Associate Cert within three months and became a more valuable person on that assignment because I then understood exponentially more than I did before. I struggled less, I got more done, and it was valuable to me and thus to my employer. I mean, what are your other options? Number one, learn as you go. EC2 today, AWS Systems Manager next week, choosing the right S3 tier the next week, CloudFront and Aurora next month, and so on. There's over 200 services in AWS. Two, I could say, forget certifications, I'm just gonna study on my own free time as I see fit. Well, we all know how that goes. Or three, get on a structured, proven path to certification. Level up faster, get your job done better and with more confidence. So the certification is for you. It's for your benefit in your and my laziness. But wait, there's an elephant in the room here. And it's what the more senior engineers warn about these certifications. And it's that they don't really teach you real world concepts. That anyone can take a course and take enough practice tests until they know all the answers and get certified. And there's some truth to this. Here's an example. How many people do you talk to that are certified, but say it's been a while and they've forgotten much of it? Or maybe that's you. I mean, AWS certifications are good for three years. 
Are you still an expert two years later if you've been two years without using it? And that leads us to a key topic that we need to talk about, and that's choosing the right certification. So a couple of things here. Number one, do not get certified in anything you don't plan to use or be a part of. If you're not in the cloud at all, or not planning to be, then you should not be getting a cloud cert. Why? Because if you don't use that knowledge after cramming for it, you will forget it. And it's then just a piece of paper. Again, the point of the cert is for you to get up to speed quickly so that you can perform better in your day to day. If you're not using this service or do not plan to use this service soon, you're wasting your time and should not pursue one. Second, think about the certification you're getting. If you're a developer and are using AWS, why get the Solutions Architect Associate Certificate? Think about the name, Solutions Architect. You are a developer. You are probably getting the Solutions Architect because you read that this is the best first real AWS certification to get. So you just want to go with that for that reason. But it doesn't help you as much as the AWS certified developer would. They're both associates, but the developer route helps you specifically. You are not architecting anything, you are developing. Another example, say you're in cybersecurity and you work in Azure daily. Why not just shoot for the AZ500? Who says you need to start with the 104 because that's traditionally how people do it or will prepare you the best? Well, now you'll just have the same certification a million others out there also have. And then third, you need to be sure that you're doing more hands-on than you think you need to be doing. It is possible to pass many of these certifications without really being able to do these things in a real setting. There are practice tests and cheats available online that can mimic the exams pretty closely. And you can take so many of these that you you learn all the answers and pass the cert and then freeze up on the job. That's a waste of time, gives certifications a bad rap, and gives experienced devs all the right in the world to criticize you. Be sure to be in the environment heavily while pursuing it. Run a home lab, deploy your site in AWS or Azure, do what it takes to actually understand the things you are learning rather than just memorizing what the text says in the docs. And then fourth, this is just a mention, don't think you need a lot of certs. Ever see those people who are like 9x AWS certified? All power to them, I bet they're amazing, but in reality, they have nine certifications they have to take every three years. Let that sink in. Instead, grab the cert that is most appropriate for you, maybe go for the professional equivalent down the road, and keep that one renewed when the time comes. And then finally, what are some good certifications to pursue? Well, what are you working in? If you're in Azure and you do administration work, then the 104. If you're a developer, then the 204. If you're in Kubernetes and you administer clusters, the CKA. Developers, the CKAD. This isn't rocket science. One is not better than the other. Instead, one is more appropriate for you than the other. The names of the certifications mean something. What do you think? Have you taken any certifications just to forget it all a year later? Do you think the certifications overall are valuable or just a waste of time? I'd love to hear about it below in the comments. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider doing so, and I'll see you in the next video.